Can you spot the one thing that might indicate there's some problems with it? When we are performing a TIG weld, there is a lot of important things that we need to check off. The amount of heat input, the amount of filler material that we are using, the quality of your edges, the stepping pattern that you are using, the consistency from everything at the beginning all the way to the end as the plate heats up, as well as a ton of other important things that you have to pay attention to. There's a lot. But this one thing is going to tell you more about your welding pass than any other detail. And this one area to pay attention to is going to be the cleaning action. When I start training people in person, most people don't even know to even check the cleaning action, let alone if they even know what the cleaning action is. If you don't know, it's all good. I got you covered on this one. Take a look at this example right here. The cleaning action is going to be this area right here. This is the white looking area directly surrounding your welding pass. It's really cool when you actually understand what this area is telling you. Check this out. When we are TIG welding aluminum, it is a lot more complicated than TIG welding something like stainless steel or mild steel. What we are doing in this case is we are TIG welding on the polarity of DC negative or direct current electrode negative. This creates the arc which creates the penetrating effect needed to weld the base material. With aluminum, when you're TIG welding this stuff, it works very differently. Aluminum base material actually has a layer on it. You can't really see it, but what this is is it's actually an oxide layer that cannot be welded by DC negative. The arc cannot properly establish simply because this layer is in the way with aluminum. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is fire up my Canaweld 201 Pulse D machine. This machine is super simple. It's great for beginners and people looking to get into TIG welding. And if you wanna get into TIG welding without spending a ton of money but still getting great results, this is the machine for you. As I'm getting it set up here, I've got it set up to DC negative and look at this. The welding here looks like complete mayhem. It actually is getting some filler material into the weld pool, but the oxide layer on the aluminum is getting in the way and preventing us from getting a clean puddle. Taking a look at it after here, you can obviously see this is not what we want. So what we'll do is we'll go to our can of weld machine here. We're gonna flip it to AC or alternating current. Now when we do this, we are gonna use the penetrating effect of the DC negative polarity, but our machine is going to flip back and forth to the DC positive polarity as well. These two polarities are gonna alternate rapidly, hence the name AC or alternating current. Now what you can do is you can adjust this using the frequency setting if your machine has one of these. For example, on your machine, you can increase the frequency to 120 Hertz. This cycle between the two polarities is gonna occur 120 times a second. If you turn it down to 100 Hertz, this cycle is now gonna happen 100 times a second. You get the idea. There's different reasons that you would make changes to this setting on your machine, but we're not really talking about that today here. We'll save that for another episode. But what does happen is when we flip our machine to AC or alternating current, you can see that our welding passes look way different. Everything looks much cleaner here. As I'm buzzing along, you can see the cleaning action around the edges of your welding pass. Look at that right here. What this is, is this is actually the oxide layer that's being cleared away from the welding area. This is happening because of the DC positive side of the cycle. As this happens, you can see that it exposes a nice clean welding puddle that we can now add filler material to, and we can manipulate much better as we travel along. Awesome. I describe this as a little snow plow just going along clearing the roads for our welding. So looking at our weld again here, this area here is gonna be the main focus of our attention here today. Now, looking at this spot that we're talking about here is gonna tell you so much about the welding job that you just did. Take a look at this example here. We can see from this example here, it looks decent enough. The filler material is nice and shiny. The stepping pattern looks good and consistent enough, but take a look at the cleaning action and you're gonna see something that most people do not. As we zoom in a little bit, look at the quality of the cleaning action. We can see that upon a further look at it here, the details show us how this actually looks a little bit scratchy and it has a little bit of an erratic finish here. It's right next to our weld clearly shown in the cleaning action. After taking a look at this, do you know what this means? What about this example here? We can see that in this example, the cleaning action looks different. It looks much more minimal and we can see that it actually starts to disappear in areas. This example shows us something totally different. Do you know what this means? We're gonna use my workbook here. As we open it up here, take a look at this page. And again, you can download this in the description below, it's free. This page here shows us these two examples. And then we can see this example here. This example shows us that the cleaning action is much more smooth and consistent. 
We have a relatively narrow cleaning action area here. And the cool thing is, is it remains consistent from start to finish. We don't see it shrinking or becoming smaller in any areas, but looking at the quality of it, we can see that it is much cleaner. We don't see any areas that are scratchy or erratic looking. Now the details that I'm talking about here don't seem like it's a big deal to most people, but it is. When we are TIG welding aluminum, there is a precarious balance between two things that we need to pay attention to. And the first thing is the overall heat input used. And the second thing is going to be the amount of filler material that we are using in relation to it. These two variables need to be balanced very carefully. And the tricky thing with TIG welding aluminum is it changes all the time in relation to what type of material thickness you're using or the type of joint you're welding. Basically a real simple rule of thumb that you can go by is if you are welding hotter passes, in this case, you need more filler material in relation to the amount of heat that you're using. If you are welding thinner stuff or welding at lower amperages, obviously in this case here, you will not need as much filler material. Like I said, the balance between these two variables is very, very important. Looking at this example here, we can see that the edges aren't really blended into the base material all that well at all. And taking a look at the cleaning action, again, we can see that it shows that it is a little bit erratic and scratchy looking. This would indicate that the amount of filler material being used is not matched properly in relation to the amount of heat input being used. In this case, we need to balance these two variables properly. This can be done by obviously increasing the amperage a little bit more, increasing the heat input. Or one thing that I like doing is waiting a little bit longer at the start of your pass. When I'm getting going with the pass here, you can see that I really focus on making sure that I wait a little bit at the start. You can usually watch the cleaning action at this point for yourself as it's occurring. At this point, you wait for things to stabilize a little bit and you can see this area become a little more clean and a little more refined. The saying that I talk about all the time on my channel, you guys have heard me say this for years now, when you start a weld, fill and chill. A couple dabs of filler material, you just chill out and wait for a few extra seconds for things to form and stabilize. This is where you're gonna get all of the details of your weld to fully chill out. And then at this point, you are good to move. Again, when you start up and you start to see this area looking scratchy or erratic, this just means that all you have to do is establish your heat input a little more and just balance things out in relation to one another. That's all. Let's take a look at this example here again. Again, these examples I'm showing you are from my PDF workbook. You can use this workbook to legitimately follow along with every episode that I do on my channel. In this example, we can see that the cleaning action becomes much more minimal, and in some cases, it starts to disappear completely. I'm sure at this point, you could probably guess what this indicates. Talking about the precarious balance that we are now familiar with, this tells us that our heat input is becoming excessive. This can happen due to excessive amperage. This can also occur from welding at a travel speed that is too slow, or in some cases using inadequate filler material. Again, looking at our two examples next to each other here, these are both dead giveaways about what is occurring with the welding pass. You can literally just look at this one area and it will tell you so much about what's happening. Let's take a look at this example here. Look at how the cleaning action again is much more consistent and stable from start to finish. We don't see any areas becoming wide or erratic or crazy. We don't see it getting skinny or disappearing at all. And take a look at our edges. We can see that the filler material is blended into the base material so much better. This is exactly what we want as far as a transition between these two materials for a welding pass, no matter what joint you're doing. This indicates the amount of heat that you are using is perfectly balanced in relation to the amount of filler material that you are using. And do you wanna know what that crazy thing is with aluminum TIG welding? You can literally look at any type of joint and these rules apply across the board. You can take a look at pipe welding around shapes like this. The cleaning action will be your key to getting a great feedback on whatever it is that you're doing. Now the biggest trick is to take a look at this detail and get your feedback and then make adjustments. Most people just look at something after they finish it, don't see what they're looking for, shrug their shoulders, and then just keep going. Actually take a moment to reflect on what this is telling you. If you look at results like this, obviously you can see sometimes things look pretty crazy. Take care of the issues and make adjustments to get better results. Like I said, most people don't even know that this is a thing. A lot of people know that cleaning action is involved with TIG welding aluminum, 
but you can use it as one of the best tools to get feedback on your work. Make adjustments to this detail and your stuff's gonna get even better, I promise. This is a complete lesson plan where I teach you how to TIG weld in three hours or less. This is a lesson that I would have killed to have when I was first getting going. If you have not seen it yet, go check it out now. My name is Dusty James from Pacific Arc TIG Welding, Phil and Shell. We will talk soon, peace.